The U.S. has begun its retaliatory strikes in the Middle East after three U.S. service members were killed and dozens of others injured in a drone attack earlier this week. We're going to get straight to CNN's Oren Lieberman. He is over at the Pentagon. Oren, what do we know about these strikes and where and when they are taking place? Abby, as we understand it, these strikes are now taking place, according to U.S. officials, in both Iraq and Syria, five days after a U.S. drone strike killed, uh, I'm sorry, a drone strike killed three U.S. service members in Jordan, the first time we have seen a loss of life as a result of enemy attacks since the beginning of the Gaza war. President Joe Biden, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had both promised a powerful U.S. response, one that might not be measured in hours, but perhaps in days. And again, according to two U.S. officials, we are now seeing that response begin in both Iraq and Syria. It is worth pointing out that the U.S. has certainly carried out strikes in Iraq and Syria over the course of the past couple of months, but this is the first time we're seeing them do them both simultaneously, striking targets in Iraq and Syria. The U.S. has made it clear Clear, that coming from the defense secretary and the president, that they ultimately hold Iran responsible for the drone attack that killed three U.S. service members and wounded scores more. Iran arms, supplies, trains, and provides weaponry to the Iranian-backed militias that the U.S. accuses of carrying out the strikes. So likely, as we learn more about the targeting, we will learn more about how the U.S. went after these Iranian-backed militias and trying to send a message not only to the militias themselves that the attacks have to stop, but also to Iran to stop arming and training uh, these militias here. So we do certainly expect more information on the strikes as the evening here goes on. But uh, important to note at this point that two U.S. officials tell us, again, that U.S. has begun striking Iraq and Syria. Now, it's worth noting also, Abby, that this might not be a one-day operation. We might expect this to continue. U.S. officials have, have said the response would be multi-tiered or multi-phased. So that means it could go after not only, for example, facilities, but also leadership, high-value targets across Iraq and, and Syria and a number of other targets very much expecting a more powerful series of strikes and actions than we've seen over the course of the past few months in Iraq and Syria, Abby. Yeah, and this is a very significant development after months of attacks, more than 160 directed at uh, U.S. assets in the region. Uh, Oren, how do the, these strikes and the geography of it in Iraq and Syria, what does it tell us about where the United States believes uh, these attacks are coming from? Well, the U.S. has seen attacks from both militias in Iraq and Syria, and that doesn't even get into Houthi attacks from the Iran-backed rebel group in Yemen against international shipping and against U.S. warships there. But the U.S. has, has ultimately held Iran responsible. Still, though, it was up to the administration whether they wanted to carry out strikes directly in Iran, but that was always considered unlikely, because the U.S. has still tried to walk this fine line between sending a more powerful message to these militias, but trying not to start a regional war with Iran. U.S. officials also believe that Iran wasn't interested in a regional war. So it is a bit of a question of how do you manage to thread that needle, and now I suspect over the course of the next few hours, we'll see what sort of target sets and how broad these operations are to get a sense of, of how uh, Biden and the administration made that decision. Who do they go after? Where do they go after them? And to what extent do they go after them on a series of strikes and operations that may very well last more than just this evening? All right, Oren Lieberman, uh, stay close with us as this develops. Uh, thanks for that. We'll go now to CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Robertson. He's in Tel Aviv. Uh, Nick, you've been covering this region for decades, this particular conflict in Gaza, which is at the heart of a lot of this for the last several months. Uh, tell us about the significance of the United States making a decision to retaliate and choosing targets in both Iraq and in Syria. Well, I, I think it would certainly be viewed by the government here in Riz Israel as, as absolutely necessary and, and certainly understood in this region that unless you hit back hard, then your enemy, in this case, uh, the Iran-backed Iran proxy in Iraq, doesn't get the message clearly enough. So I think the expectation in this region would be if the United States is going to have a meaningful impact and really send a message that killing U.S. soldiers is, is not a option in the future, then it has to be big and bold and hard. And, and uh, as Oren says, we don't know how far the administration is going 
going to take this. I think also people will look in this region and say, OK, on the one hand, we hear from the Iranian president saying that he's not really looking for a direct confrontation with the United States, and neither is the United States uh, looking for that confrontation uh, with Iran. However, it, most people in this region would say, well, just hold on a minute. Iran actually is already waging a war against the United States' regional interests, its economic interests, its military interests, which are there ostensibly to stop ISIS uh, gaining a foothold again in Syria and in Iraq. Uh, it, it's, it is Iran is waging a war, therefore, against, uh, against the United States' interests. So, albeit through its proxies, Iran's hand is very, very big in this, be it supplying the weaponry that was used in the strike uh, at Tower 22 in Jordan, um, or, or whether it's uh, supplying and supporting um, groups like Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas in Gaza or Hezbollah in Lebanon to the north of here and, and, and other groups um, in Syria and Iraq, so, and, and the Houthis as well. So I think the, the perception here would be that the Biden administration, if it's going to have an effect, it needs to hit hard. But of course, it is that delicate balance because it, it, events can be misinterpreted. You know, on one hand, we're given to believe by one of the Iranian backed proxies in Iraq that they may have overreached in this strike uh, last week, that it wasn't intended to kill uh, US service personnel. Well, they did. Um, and that's how escalation happens. And that's how um, people, particularly when you're dealing with these militias that have a mind of their own, they may have the weapons from Iran, but they have also have a, a mind of their own, um, that, that they can overstep the mark. So it, I think tonight the region will look for the United States to deliver a decisive message, and um, perhaps in the coming days. But also that concern is obviously writ large. They don't want to see an escalation. But take, look, stand in Jordan's shoes. Jordan has been not in this fight until now, and let's say it's not at the moment. But Iran's proxies decided to pick a U.S. target inside of Jordan. I think most Jordanians were sort of unaware that, uh, the, that their government hosts uh, a contingent of U.S. forces so close to the border with, uh, with Syria. It's not a secret, but it's just not discussed much. And the Jordanian approach to this strike when it first happened was to try to say it had actually happened in Syria. Then they don't like this. They don't want this, uh, this es these escalations to be visited upon them. They have a, a delicate political situation in their country, which is affected by what's happening here in um, Israel. It's all interconnected. But again, it comes back to that Iran is uh, prosecuting a war of sorts against yeah. the United States just through proxies, not directly. Yeah, that, and as the defense secretary said this week, they can deny it all they want, but without their backing, these attacks would not happen. Nick, stick around for us as we continue to follow this breaking news story. I want to go to the White House now where MJ Lee is standing by for us. MJ, Biden earlier this week said that he had decided what to do in response to this deadly attack on U.S. troops. Now that the uh, strikes have, in fact, begun, is the White House saying anything at this hour? The White House uh, so far has not confirmed anything uh, about the strikes that my colleagues have uh, reported on out of the Pentagon. Uh, Abby, it is hard to overstate just what a consequential decision-making process this has been for the president following the deaths of those three U.S. service members. Uh, following that drone strike in Jordan last weekend, you'll recall that the president immediately convened his national security team and was right away presented with a range of options. And I think the fact uh, that we are seeing these strikes almost a week later sort of speaks to some of the very complicated considerations and the deliberations that have gone into how exactly the U.S. was going to retaliate. Uh, we know that there are two big considerations that the president uh, has been weighing. One, which Nick and Orrin both alluded to, is making sure that this was a retaliation and strikes that were uh, taking into account the gravity of the situation. Again, the deaths of these three U.S. service members uh, 
showing real force and showing uh, uh, the possibility for real deterrence, which uh, so far obviously has not been successful. Uh, and second, as Nick was talking about, uh, is wanting to prevent a bigger war uh, from being created. The president has talked about this over and over again. Different uh, U.S. and White House officials have been clear from day one that the last thing that they want is a bigger regional conflict. And, you know, one of the big questions uh, heading into this moment has been whether the U.S. would be willing to strike assets uh, inside Iran. And we have actually gotten some clear and strong indications from officials, uh, though not definitive that that probably was not going to be on the table because of how escalatory it would be. You know, when I have asked in the White House briefing room, is that option on the table? The response uh, that I have gotten is we are not looking for war uh, with Iran. Now, again, uh, this is just the first step. Officials have been really clear that what we see on day one is not going to be everything, that there's uh, going to be sort of multiple stages and multiple iterations of these strikes to come. Uh, so we'll see sort of what uh, comes next and what what more we can learn about these strikes and what sort of the next steps are going to be. Uh, but again, a, a very consequential decision for the president, uh, very much uh, with these three U.S. service members uh, in mind. Of course, the president has just returned uh, from that dignified transfer uh, process that was incredibly solemn and just clarified for everyone uh, watching around the country sort of the, the sacrifice that goes into uh, every U.S. service member that is serving abroad, the dangers that they confront. And that has been really top of mind for the president this week.